It is a very foggy day in October 2015 and it's time to work on the Stuart engine again. Welcome to the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild. And it's part 27, almost the final painting. What I'm doing at the moment is removing the two pegs that hold the parallel motion and I'm putting these in a safe place with the other parallel motion parts in my green box. I would say it is fairly vital to keep all the small parts in the same place because very shortly the engine is going to go back together and I really would not like to lose any of these bits. If I lose them, I have to remake them. So that's a good incentive really to keep them in one place. This engine seems to be taking forever to complete, but there's only one way to do the job and that's the right way. In this clip, I'm removing the top bearings that support the beam. I could of course just paint them all over in the same color. That would make life very simple. But my life is seldom simple, and I always do things the hard way. So off come the bearings, they're going to go into a bath of cellulose thinners to remove all the oil. It's now time to clean up the main parts of the column with a piece of sandpaper. I'll also be going over the entire thing very shortly with some cellulose thinners. At the moment I'm cleaning up the horseshoe shaped piece, and I still don't know what this is called. No one has enlightened me. I'm in the dark with beam engines. Normally I work on steam locomotives and general steam engines but beam engines have bits on them that the other engines don't. This is the part that supports the watts parallel motion via the little pegs that you saw me remove earlier. In this clip I'm using a sanding block because it's nice and square. It is really important not to round the edges of any of the metal. And after that it's time to use plenty of cellulose thinners in a very well ventilated area and get rid of the oil and the general grind. Time now to wake up. This is a different part of the video. This is all about a water pipe, so do try to contain your excitement while you watch this bit. This is not just any pipe, this is the pipe that is the outlet from the water pump. And this passes through the bed plate through a small hole, but the problem is I need to put a pressure fitting on it, and the pressure fitting nut will not go through the hole. The reason for the pressure fitting is that the pump will be under pressure when the engine's running. So I want to make sure that I have a pressure tight water system because you never know whether or not in the future anyone's going to use this engine for actually pumping water. The nut does not fit in the hole, I need to make it bigger, so obviously I'm going to drill a hole with this twist drill, followed by deburring the hole with a deburring tool. And now the nut fits through the hole. Before soldering on the pressure union, I made this small brass fitting. This fits into the hole on the bed plate, and the pipe passes through this fitting. Then with the fitting in place on the pipe, I silver soldered a pressure union onto the end of the pipe and the whole thing passes through the bed plate with ease. Yes, I know I've been stalling, but it's back to the painting. I'm running this purposely at a very fast speed because it is incredibly tedious and I've been very careful not to get paint on certain areas, although if I do I can wipe it off later once the paint's dried. So it looks nice and pretty. I'm leaving some of the parts in bare metal. Apologies once again to the painting purists who know all about it. This is the way I do it with a scale paintbrush. That way I get scale brush marks and it looks okay. Oh dear, it's finished. That must be it. Oh no, hang on, there's some more. Yeah, I'm painting the bearing caps here just to finish off. And eventually when the paint's hardened, it's going to be time to put the engine back together at last. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Happy Halloween.